Hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. Knock, knock. Who's there? Iris. Iris who? Iris, you were here. Oh, oh cute. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Hi, Christy. Hey, Christy, do you know what April 30th was? What? It was Arbor Day. Oh, good. I missed it. <laughs> oh, Arbor Day is huge. You know, it's yeah. very important. And listen to this interesting tidbit. One of the oldest known trees in the world is Methuselah, a 4,852-year-old tree. He's a Great Basin bristlecone pine in California. That's incredible. That is amazing. He was like... Over, he was like 2,000, and I can't do math this fast. He was like 2,300 years old when, when Christ was born. I can't even, my brain Caesar, can't even wrap Caesar, my head around it. Although, yeah. isn't that amazing? So that's that's my little nod to Arbor Day because we love trees. Yes. We did a whole episode about trees. We did? Yeah, that was a good one. You know, I'm a little sad because it's no longer Fresh Celery Month. <laughs> April, but now it's May. Finally. Yeah, it's May. And not only is it International Compost Week, which means this oh. is going to be a great week for me to do my annual or semi-annual turn of the compost uh -huh. pile. Yeah. But Saturday is going to be National Iris Day. Really? Isn't that fitting? Because this week, what are we talking about? We're talking about Iris, but we didn't know that, did we? This is... Like one of those synchronicity, what do you say? Synchronicity. Keep I don't going, know what you, you got say. it. Do it. <laughs> lucky things. Yeah. What is lucky things? <laughs> Twinkie dinks. Yeah. Twinkie dink, Edith. It is a Twinkie dink. <laughs> right. Oh, that's very good. Hey, let's thank one of our garden party members. Okay. This week we get to thank the wonderful Anne B from Minnesota for oh. being a member of our garden party. She is under the category of deadheader, which means that she will soon be getting her Upside Down Tulips mug and some seeds from us. Okay. I cannot wait to find out which seeds she wants, and I hope she lets us know quickly because it's getting time to plant Yes, really soon. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it is. And folks, if you want to become a member of our garden party, which means you're a supporter of Upside Down Tulips, uh -huh. and you just drop a couple bucks a month to us, all you need to do is look at the show notes to learn more about all the fun rewards you get by being a member of our garden party. You know, it's interesting. It goes all the way from a couple bucks to infinity. <laughs> That's right. You can give us infinity money if you want. Yeah, if you give us infinity money, you get yeah. to pick a topic of the show. You get to you get to have Christy do your uh, dishes. <laughs> <laughs> um, when did that become part of the deal, Edith? Because, I don't, well, we don't. We never had the infinity. I wasn't at that meeting. Before. I got to show up to these meetings more often. Yeah, I you think. do. See what happens. And you can get fun merch by going to our. Upside Down Tulip Store by clicking on the link down below. Uh-huh. You can get a When in Doubt Mulch It t-shirt. Yes, you can. And yesterday, I saw a beautiful, it really is beautiful, uh, the garden journal with our logo on the front. That's gorgeous. It's Everybody really nice. needs a garden journal. Yeah, mine has really been very helpful this year. Also exciting for this week's episode is that we have, um, of course, we always have new uh, fun pod plays that we play throughout uh -huh. our episodes. Uh -huh. And this week, we have a brand new episode featuring Karen Slack as the squirrel. Yeah, you, you're you listening to it before Netflix picks it up. So lucky you. <laughs> lucky you people with these. Yeah, this squirrel has become one of our absolute favorite characters because I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan <laughs> of the squirrels. Yeah. 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 But, okay, you know what I am a fan of? Cicadas. Do you know about this, what's happening in 2021? Every 17 years? Is that what it is? Edith? It depends on which brood it is. Oh. There's three different ones in the United States, 
And this one, yeah, is every 17 years. And I have a list here of the states it's going to hit. Ooh, what are they? Because this is a really big deal, folks. If you don't know what a cicada, these bugs come, and there's literally thousands and thousands of them. It's going to hit, the, the entomologists predict, it's going to hit Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and West Virginia. But not Colorado. We're going to miss no. it. We're going to miss it. This particular brood looks like this is it's, it's in the northeast and kind of around the northeast there. It doesn't seem to get any further west than Ohio. Folks, if you have a, a, a really good showing of cicadas, will you write to us about it? Yes, please This is do. where these grubs have been in the ground for 17 years, and uh -huh. then they all erupt at once to make sweet love with each other before yep. they lay eggs and die, right? Yes. And they make all that noise. They make so much noise. They are perfectly harmless. Don't be afraid of them. They will. They don't even have a jaw. Did you know that? They can't bite you. They don't Aww. even eat. They just, yeah, for 17 years, they lay under the ground, and they suck the sap from tree roots. Then when they come up, they f go up into the tree, right? They crack out of their shells. And then in like a day, they become adults. Takes them like a day. And then they look for a mate and find one because there's millions of them. <laughs> you know, it really sounds like cicadas are living their life to the fullest, aren't they? Aren't they, though? Yeah, they don't have a lot of time, but they make really good use for it. And they're, you know why they're helpful to us? Because they feed the birds. I mean, all those things that, that we need for uh, as gardeners, the cicadas feed them. Hey, how's your garden doing? Oh, my gosh, so much better. We didn't have any snow. We didn't have a <laughs> frost. Um, I'm excited. Things are coming up. I spent like five hours today preparing all of my uh, containers. Oh, wow. Oh, I made my own, um, what do you call it? Potting soil. Oh, I made good. my own potting soil. We have that, we had that recipe in. We talked about that in our container episode. In the contain make it, making your own. Yes. Because if you have a lot, it can get really expensive. So I made my own. Smart. Yeah, well, you know, this. thank you, this podcast. Yes, I always say, if you want to have a really good garden, uh huh, start a gardening podcast yes because it means we have to stay on things don't we we sure do can i say something else that i found out yeah okay so we like hot peppers we're, we're in colorado we like hot peppers yeah right? i like things spicy so um maybe I, not orange bonnet spicy okay that is really spicy but, but i like that, i like a kick it's not as spicy as for example the carolina carolina reaper which has a heat level of 2 to 2.2 million Schofield hit heat units. That sounds a like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, a jalapeno has 2,500 to 5,000. Oh, my goodness. So this is put out by a company. This is why I'm do telling you all of this, because I've never heard in my life of the better a better name for a company. This is called the Pucker Butt Pepper Company. <laughs> <laughs> Pucker Butt Pepper Company. <laughs> It's so hot, you won't pucker your mouth. Uh -huh. you, you will just pucker, pucker your butt. Now, is that not great? They're in South Carolina. It's a real thing. And then they gave great names to their hot sauces. <laughs> One of them is called I Dare You Stupid. <laughs> or Shoot, That's Hot. There's one that's called Bacon Me Crazy. And my favorite, I think, is Pucker Butts Pucker Duck Hot Sauce. <laughs> you can buy seeds. And you can get the the starters from them if you are in South Carolina. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? That is cool. That is cool. Yeah. How's your garden, Christy? Well, I'm slowly getting my beds cleaned out. I tell you, I, there's nothing I like more than having a couple of straight hours to clean out the garden beds. Yeah. And I pop on a true crime podcast and listen to a great story while I discover all the little plants that are underneath all the leaves. Nice. That very enjoyable. Nice. Yeah. Well, I walk by and they look good. They're looking great. Out oh, there. thanks. Looking great out there. It is. I also winter sowed some more things. So technically, I don't, we, we still call it winter sowing, but it really is spring sowing, I guess, in my milk jugs. But now I'm sowing outside annuals like zinnia, sunflowers, and marigolds. 
And I was a little worried because the vegetables that I winter sowed a couple weeks ago, we've had so much snow and then Uh we had rain. I worried that they were going to rot because they were going to get all soggy. But I saw a couple little cauliflowers popping through. So that was a good sign. Good, 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 good. I had some uh, wonderful flowers blooming everywhere. The snow tramped everything down, but all the tulips and the daffodils and the hyacinths all popped back up. I have some sort of mystery bush blooming. I never know what it is. It might be some kind of spirea. Is it new or, or you've I've had it? I've had it for a long time. Uh-huh. And uh, it might be some kind of spirea, but it's not like the other spirea uh-huh. I have. But it's uh-huh. blooming. It's white. It's pretty. And also what's blooming is the brand new forsythia bush that I bought last week. Nice. I know you've wanted one of those for a really long time. And because it was on my list of our New Year's tasks that we said, you know, how we want our gardens to be for 2021, uh-huh. I said, I'm going to do it for Scythia. And I think because I said it out loud and I saw a coupon for it at the local nursery, uh-huh. I went, "That this is it. I'm buying it. Now it's still in the bucket. I haven't planted it yet. Now that might take me a while to get it into the ground, but I will eventually get well, it in the ground. Of course you will. Of course yeah. you will. I also moved some bachelor buttons, which I think folks might find this little tip interesting. Mm-hmm. In my vegetable garden, I have a border of calendula and bachelor buttons every year. And they always overseed and self-sow, and it ends up in the vegetable garden. I will get 20, 30, 40, 50 bachelor button plants in the vegetable garden. And what I do this time of year when they're really small is in the border, I will dig a little hole, dig about 20 holes, and then I'll quick run into the vegetable garden, scoop up a bachelor button with as much soil attached to it as I can, gently put it in the hole, tamp it in to get rid of all the air pockets, and water the heck out of it. Mm -hmm. And then water the heck out of it for the next couple days. And I spread little bachelor buttons where I wanted them to be. Yeah. You know, Christy, I did the same thing yesterday with echinacea. Echinacea, which is the purple cone flower. Mm -hmm. And you're right. As long as when they're little and they don't know they've been moved. So it's like you take their little living room with them, have the other hole ready. Ready. Ready, and I water it, and then I wait until the water sucks away. But uh, it's really fun because then you can, of course, Mother Nature gets you back. Like in my in my backyard, what I noticed, I have about 40 lettuce plants that I <laughs> didn't, I didn't put them there. But you know the lettuce yeah. seeds? Yeah. They have the, fu- the, the yeah. little cotton on them. Yeah. They're everywhere. Luckily, I love... Salad bar at your house. Yeah. I've had the lettuce reseed and then get in my gravel driveway. (laughs) So I call it my driveway lettuce. (laughs) Also, what happened in my garden is that I had a pretty good-sized sage bush in the front, maybe about three by three feet. Wow. And the the last round of snow we had crushed it and broke off most of the limbs. Is this a Russian sage? Just regular oh, just sage. Just regular sage. Wow. Yep. yep. Crushed it, broke off limbs. And now everybody give me a nice, aww. Aww. But, but. I don't care because I hated that plant anyway and it was too big in that spot, so nature did me a favor. Oh, okay. Very <laughs> so good. So good riddance, sage bush. I'm going to knock it all down. And I have a little musing of something I learned about gardening this week. What did you learn? I learned a term called a cemetery garden. So there is a new cemetery that opened up in Vancouver and it is part of a growing trend of growing cemeteries toward more toward the living. So this is a family owned and operated business and in addition to running the cemetery, inside the cemetery it also has a lush vegetable garden and beehives. Wow. It's that's a kind wonderful. of place that you can visit your loved ones and then go home with a box full of produce and some fresh honey. That's so great. Isn't that great using the space like that? Yes. They said that they started to give away the produce to anyone who visits the grounds because they had so much. And so unlike traditional cemeteries, which may have salespeople roaming the grounds to sell you a plot, they're coming around with a bag of free tomatoes. Oh, <laughs> that's really nice of, of them. You know, I mean, you don't want someone to die to get the produce, but that's a really nice thing. You know? Wow. Well, folks, if you ever hear words or terms you're not familiar with or you want a good laugh, check out the Upside Down Dictionary or on our website. Just click on the link in our show notes. If you want to see pictures of our gardens or inspirations, gardening jokes, no matter how bad, 
<laughs> Visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Oh, Christy, we have blogs too. Yes, I know, Edith. And I write some oh, of them. Oh, that's right, because you do it. Okay. And a YouTube channel, Christy. Just sign up for our newsletter too. But if you want to have updates, jokes, gardening signs, everything. It has everything. <laughs> Ah, summertime. The living is easy. The birds are chirping, the bees are humming, the insects are buzzing. Oh no. What are you looking at? Get out of my garden. Who? Me? Yes, you, you awful bushy tailed rat. <laughs> I'm not a rat though, am I? I'm a rodent. Oh, look here. A not spread tomato. Get away from that. I grew that from seed. I'm just going to take a bite, yeah? <gasps> and then I'll throw it on your garden floor. No, get out. They found the bubonic plague on a squirrel in Jefferson County. Well, that's a laugh, isn't it? Like you humans don't have your very own plague. I'm coming over there right now. Oh, wait. What's this? Under my arm? Uh, oh, a little lump. <coughs> Is it a bilbo? Oh, I'm feeling a bit feverish as well. Okay, I'm keeping my distance, but you get out. This is delicious. Best part of tomato I've ever had. I'm full. What's this over here? A cantaloupe? They're my favorite. So kind of you. You shouldn't have. You asked for it. <gasps> Where are you? Where did you go? Up here, in my tree. Hello, I see you've made quite a mess of your beans Ooh, and your eggplant. <laughs> your aubergine is destroyed. <laughs> They're fragile, though, aren't they? They can't withstand your throwing pots and pans and whatnot at oh, them. Oh, no. I've got to get a grip. Finding your garden not the peaceful and serene oasis you thought it would be? Maybe it's time for a nice cup of gardeners. Get a grip tea. Made with the finest dried lemon balm, chamomile flowers, holy basil, dandelion root, lavender buds, whiskey berries, rum raisins, and bourbon grains. We'll have you feeling better in no time. In fact, drink enough and you'll be feeling nothing at all. Have a cuppa. <laughs> You're gonna need it. Okay, we're going to talk about the beautiful flower, the iris, today. And I have to tell you, Edith, yes. that planting iris was one of my first gardening tasks I ever did. Yeah. I had just recently bought my house when I was in my 20s, and my neighbor lived up the street, and she was dividing iris and asked me if I wanted some. And I planted them, and I waited all summer for them to bloom, not realizing that they are a May oh, or June yeah. blooming flower. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But then, of course, the next, so I was like, man, this sucks. But then the next spring, <laughs> I, and, I, and I have to say, for decades, it has been one of my all-time favorite flowers. Well, it's a lovely, beautiful flower that comes back year after year after year. It requires not a lot of care. It's so hardy. And it's like, it's like zucchini in that people, you will befriend people because they'll try to give you away the root. Yes. Or, you know, yeah. they really, no, gardeners don't want to kill living roots or rhizomes. Mm -hmm. So you'll just see bags of them everywhere. And if you see that, listeners, get it and plant it. If you, you don't have an it. iris in your yard, here's your chance to get one. And if you do have iris in your yard, here's an opportunity to learn more about this beautiful flower and how to care for it to the greatest success that you have. Yes. But the good news is about everything we're going to say about iris is that we're going to tell you best practices, but they're so hardy and so easy to grow. They will forgive you if you they mess will. up. I mean, I do worst practices, worst, pra and they <laughs> still come back Me too. year after year after year. Did you know, Edith, that the iris flower dates back to ancient Greece and they have relevant drawings that are still visible in a number of ancient palaces of the iris. Wow. You know, the fleur-de-lis, the French fleur-de-lis, people think that's based on the on the iris. It is. There you go. From New Orleans, right? Uh-huh. Or France. Both, yes. <laughs> yes. According to Greek mythology, iris was the messenger of the gods, a connection between heaven and mortal beings on earth. 
and Iris was the goddess of the rainbow, and a beautiful flower sprouted wherever Iris stepped. Oh, that's nice. Now, that's in North nice. America, it's thought to have been brought over here by early European settlers who brought bulbs and rhizomes to the New World, and Iris flower origins have been traced to Virginia, where bulbs were probably planted in the 1600s. Wow. Wow. The same ones are probably still growing, folks. That probably. is how hardy they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They attract butterflies and hummingbirds, and they make the most beautiful cut flowers. And there's just nothing like the smell. If you get the scented kind, it, it's like, uh, I don't know. It, it literally affects your mood. It makes you happy. I believe don't it. you think? Yes. It's the best smell. It's not sickly sweet or anything like that. In fact, it makes you happy. Vincent van Gogh, when you, everybody knows his painting, the irises painting, mm -hmm. it literally looks like the irises are moving. He painted that when he was in the insane asylum the year before his death. Wow. And he felt that, that he called the painting the lightning conductor for my illness because he thought he could keep himself from going insane by continuing to paint. And there was a beautiful garden at the insane asylum. And that's why he could paint the irises. Wow. Yeah. That re makes me think of Georgia O'Keeffe, who was famous for painting a lot of irises and how some folks use the interpretation that it was a um, metaphor for uh, feminine body parts. Uh -huh. And she rejected the interpretation. She said, well, I made you take time to look at what I saw and when you took time to really notice my flower, you hung your, all your own associations with flowers on my flower, and you wrote about my flower as if, as if I think and see what you think and see of the flower, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure she used just that tone of voice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There are a um, couple different types of irises. You've got your bearded iris, which uh -huh. is the most common kind of iris that people have. This is the kind that has... Um, this looks like it's sticking its tongue out at you. It's uh -huh. usually going to be yellow or gold. And it'll be kind of this fuzzy tongue. That's the bearded iris. Um, you can also have a Siberian iris. These um, are hybrids, and they have a very delicate, very thin. So if a bearded iris is maybe two to three feet tall and grows in zones three to ten, a Siberian one is going to be taller and be three to four feet but it's good from zones three to nine, and it can be full sun to partial shade. So that's a good one for wow. shade purposes. Wow. Yeah. Now, a Japanese iris is two to four feet. It's good for zones four to nine, and it has huge flat blooms that resemble birds, and they can thrive really well around ponds. They're one of the irises that tolerate moisture a bit more at their toes. You know, Christy, that just made me think of something, which is that I have irises in the full sun, and I also have irises under my oak tree, but the tree's not leafed out yet. So if you have iris, they bloom before the leaves come. So it's like, it's perfect. It is perfect. They do appreciate and like full sun, but they'll forgive you if you don't give them full sun all the time. Yeah. You know, there are 300 species of iris and over 60,000 cultivars. Wow, what's a cultivar? Different variety of it. Different variety, cultivar. Uh -huh. Great great word, great yeah. word. <laughs> but I have an interesting thing here now that we're talking about cultivars mm -hmm. and varieties. The yellow flag iris, okay, can be useful as well as a nuisance. In British Columbia, they say that it is wickedly aggressive, quote, unquote, and they don't want people to plant it because it is just, it'll take over. However... Listen to this. They purify water by removing heavy metals and nutrients in agricultural runoff with their roots. They do like the ponds. And remember we had that episode about the baby food and all the awful metals in soil? Yes. It looks to me like the yellow flag iris will remove that. How wonderful is that? Plants are really amazing. They are amazing. Damn. Damn. It's not in, classified as invasive in all parts of North America, however. I don't okay. know why it has something for the Canadians. 
Hey, but it does. Who knows? Or the, Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Well, you know, Christy, speaking of how wonderful uh, that iris are, you know that their roots, well, they're called oris roots, um, that they are used in uh, perfume. They are used in perfume. They have, listen to this, they have to be dried for at least three years to develop the best scent. Then they take this old root and they grind it into a powder and then steam distill it to obtain an essential oil. Sometimes it's called oris butter. It is used, this oris oil, uh-huh. in perfumes, cosmetics, and some types of gin, specifically Bombay Sapphire. Have you had that gin? Yes. Doesn't have a really different That's taste. Interesting. And it Isn't that interesting? I always wonder whenever we have these stories, Eden's like, who are the people that in- discovered this? I don't know. Like how. somebody just yeah. had like an old iris rhizome hanging out for three years uh-huh. and then went, hey, this smells good. I'm going to grind this down and I'm going to start drinking it. Well, you know, Christy, people used to, there were no grocery stores. They looked in their backyard, they looked in the mm-hmm. woods, they found things and go, can we eat and or use this in any way? And if it wasn't poisonous, well, that that's what that's what had to have happened. Um, I also read something about the dried roots of an iris called Florentia, which was considered a cure for blood and lung diseases, and teething babies were encouraged to gnaw on a finger of the dried root for its natural fluoride. What? Wow. Irises. Amazing. Really, really, truly. Oh, Autumn, the falling leaves, the crisp breeze, the... What's this? I planted hundreds of bulbs yesterday, and they're all dug up. No, but I put cayenne and red pepper flakes on them. (gasps) My newly planted pansies, chewed to the root. Oh, come on. Was it that same awful squirrel who ate my tomatoes? Oh, do you feel that too? Winter's coming. Oh, look how bushy my tail is. It's gonna be a long one. Hope I have enough food stored away. Wait a minute. What's this? It's bulbs. She planted bulbs. And look here, bulbs. Tiny little tender bulbs as an appetizer. <laughs> an amusement. <laughs> How sweet of her. She must have forgiven me for eating the tomatoes. What a nice woman. Oh, wait. Oh, no, she didn't. They're spicy hot. Ha. I didn't she know Mexican food is my favorite. <laughs> Delicious and so satisfying. I'm going to dig all of them up and hide them under my tree. And look here. (gasps) Edimentals, pansies and violas. I don't really like edimentals, but if she went to all the trouble to leave me dessert, (coughs) I wouldn't want to be rude. (coughs) Like me mum always said, finish your plate. (laughs) Look here. It's like a buffet out here. Oh, they're delicious! Who knew? All that work. I'm gonna get that squirrel if it's the last thing I do. High blood pressure day in the garden. Have a cup of Calm Tom's high tea. No longer just for pricey restaurants. You can have high tea in the comfort of your own kitchen. Calm Tom's high tea. Organic tea leaves, rose hips, our love, and a little something extra goes into every tea bag. Have a cuppa. You'll feel better. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you see an iris rhizome, they're large, aren't they, Edith? They look like cigars, don't they? But don't smoke them. No, don't smoke them. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. And if someone gives you one... When should you plant them? Right away. <laughs> do you know what I say? <laughs> what do you say? I think plant them when you have time. Because they live, don't they? They, they do. They're they so hardy. Mm-hmm. The best practice is to plant them in late summer or early fall so that when the nighttime temperatures remain 
between 40 and 50 degrees. But it's okay if you, whenever somebody gives you one, to stick it in the ground. Yeah. You won't get a bloom, you know. That's a good point. This year, but it's okay. At least they're in the ground for the yeah. following year. Right? Yeah, better to plant them in the ground than to wait for the perfect time. Exactly. Yeah. Irises do best in full sun. They can tolerate as little as half a day of sun, but it's not ideal. If they don't have any light, they will not bloom. So just be careful about where you want to put them in your yard. But I got to tell you, in all honesty, folks, I have iris sprinkled around my yard that are in what would, one would consider partial shade, and they do fine. I do too, Christy, and they do just fine. Mm-hmm. They like fertile soil that's neutral to slightly acidic. And it's nice when you plant them to give them a couple inches of compost, which mm-hmm. is kind of true when you plant a yeah. lot of plants. That, that's think, just a good it? idea for everybody, yeah. Though, let's be honest, we live in Colorado, and our soil is slightly alkaline. Yeah. And I've never done anything to make it more acidic, Mm -mm. and they do fine. (laughs) One thing, though, is very important is that irises like good drainage all year round. Um, they 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 like wet feet but dry knees. I've heard that. Wet feet but dry knees. So they like to be, they like a good watering, but they don't like it to go up to their knees. Beautifully said. Not too much. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. They will not tolerate wet soil in the wintertime. They'll rot. Oh. Oh, oh that's well, interesting. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's interesting. It's the, the, one of the, the biggest mistakes that people make in planting iris is planting them too deeply. Aha. Uh-huh. Think of planting an iris like a duck floating on the water. The rhizomes of the plant should be partially exposed to the elements or thinly covered with soil in hot climates. If you bury them too deeply, mm-hmm. they won't do well and they won't bloom. Yeah. So, I mean, if you go out there, if you have iris, you'll see that for yourself. The rhizomes sticking out. Don't panic. That's what they mm-hmm. want to do. They're like sunbathing. Exactly. Oh, I love yes. it. That's great. Um, now, we have new merch that says, when in doubt, mulch it. Uh-huh. And the exception to that is when it comes to iris. When in doubt, don't mulch it. Yeah. Don't mulch around the rhizome as this practice may encourage rot. And of course, when you plant it, do water it thoroughly. That goes for every single thing. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good point. Yeah. Irises need to be fertilized. Fertilize in early spring with an all-purpose fertilizer. That's what I use, Uh just an all-purpose one. Careful of using one that's a high-nutrient fertilizer. Uh, Otherwise, you'll just get a lot of leafy greens and not as much flour. So you're saying be careful of using one that has a high nitrogen. So you want like a 555? Yeah, exactly. 555 meaning potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen in equal parts. It's all-purpose. All-purpose, and that will give you a beautiful bloom. Careful not to overwater. Too much moisture in the soil can cause the rhizomes to rot. However, water consistently and deeply, especially if there's a summer drought. So they do need water in the summer. Yeah. But I've also, it's also been a drought and I've had those little suckers live. So yeah, they, they really, they really hang in there. I tell (laughs) you. After your flowers have bloomed, deadhead them, which means take a pinchers and cut off the flower stalk. Not the leaves. Not the leaves, you. just the flower stalk. Mm-hmm. Uh, some at the bottom or right below the bloom? The Would bottom. you do them at the bottom at the of bottom. the stalk? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, some bearded irises will keep blooming. There are some re-bloomers with that too. Sometimes I'll actually go through the, you know how some bearded irises will have maybe four or five flowers on a stalk? Uh-huh. So if you still have little buds that haven't opened up yet, then don't cut it at the stalk. But you can cut out the individual bulbs. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's good, Christy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Do not trim your iris leaves after they finish blooming. Leaves will carry on the photosynthesis and they're getting all of next year's energy into the winter so they're making next year's flower. So so, so the are, leaves are feeding the roots. Yes. So that's why you don't want to cut them really, really mm. short because then you take away mm. their food. After a hard frost in the fall, you can cut back the foliage pretty hard. Remove any foliage that appears yellowed or spotted and dispose of all that in the compost pile. Mm -hmm. For winter protection, depending upon where you live, you may need to cover the rhizomes with an inch or two of some leaves or maybe pine boughs or something like that. 
if you have if you if you are maybe in like zone one or two, uh huh, three. You know, Christy, that I I mentioned how my iris were underneath the oak tree, mm-hmm. and I don't ever rake. I I mean I will not rake until like this week because it's exactly what you said. The leaves are protecting mm-hmm. those roots. Usually, a big cue for me is when the forsythias are in bloom. Oh, good. And now I'll good have one. one in my yard to and tell me tell when you, that it'll is. It'll tell you. Very good. So in early spring, remove the winter mulch and any old foliage that is around there so that the new green shoots have room. And enjoy your flowers in the spring. I'm a little worried about our iris this year because we've had some temperatures that have gone down at night. And I'm hoping last year we didn't get any iris. Wow. Well, you know, Christy, a good sign is... Your neighbor, they have those little short iris. Mm-hmm. We saw bulbs, and didn't we see a couple bulbs on couple your are, iris? A couple are popping up in That's my iris. That's a good iris, harbinger so. right there. I think so. That's a good sign. And if it didn't kill the blossoms on my peach tree, and stone fruit are gentle and fragile, I bet you we'll have iris. Oh, wouldn't that be great? I'm going to take so many oh, pictures. That'd be so I'm going to put them all over Facebook. Over time, it's not unusual for plantings of iris to become overcrowded which causes the rhizomes to lose vitality and if, and you'll stop getting any blooms. When this happens, which can be around two to five years, it's time to divide and replant healthy rhizomes in fresh soil. So shortly after blooming, maybe around midsummer, I always say July in our zone, which is uh-huh. zone 5B, dig up a clump of your iris and you'll find that the original iris that you planted, if you planted it, it's called the mother Mm -hmm. has produced some baby rhizomes. So separate them from the mother with a knife. And I'll tell you this, is that you can use a knife. Sometimes I just break them with my hands, Edith. And um, you're supposed to discard the mother. But to be honest with you, my iris are so old, I have no idea what the mother looks like. Oh, isn't that something? So who knows? Can I ask Mm -hmm. you, if if you're digging them up and you happen to slice one of the baby roots in half, Will they still grow? I think so. Okay. I think usually if it'll have a little, it should have like a little green part on it. You know, we should have green. Okay. That's what I usually do. But it wouldn't hurt just to, to plant it and see, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, the great experiment, huh? Yeah, a lot as of roots. As long as it has roots on it. As long as it has some of the, okay. Yeah. Uh, you want to inspect the rhizome to see if it has any rotting tissue or any sign of disease and just remove that and I throw those in the garbage. Okay. Trim your iris. The leaves down three to five inches, and I and I do mine in a teepee shape, so like a triangle. You you make them like a really? How come? Mm-hmm. That's just what I've been taught to do, huh? I bet you that looks nicer than you know than straight a, across, straight across, like a, <laughs> it could be, like, right. you know, yeah. Uh, plant them in a new bed and replant them where they were before. If you add a new soil, or just share them with your friends and enjoy all the wonderful irises that are going to come up. Now, one of the cool things about iris is that they are deer resistant. So if you're someone out there who has a problem with deer. We've had letters about that. We've had so many letters about deer. Yeah. They don't like iris. Plant away. Good to know. Um, They are, however, susceptible to a iris borer, which will overwinter and leave eggs in the spent leaves. So if you see vertical streaks in the leaves then look for these little borers and squish them. Oh, okay. And it can also, iris can get something called verbena bud moth, white flies, iris weevil, slug snails, aphids, kind of something similar to what a lot of flowers get because they're great. Yeah, and a lot of that is not going to kill the plant at all. And a a good spray of water gets rid of them. Okay, good. Good, good. (laughs) Or get some ladybugs to get rid of those aphids. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. Now, last year I had so many iris, I was dividing them up, and none of my local friends would take them anymore, Edith. (laughs) Yeah. So I asked my family, who's spread across the United States, if they want iris, and I shipped iris to them. Oh, wow. Because they're fine, right? They were fine. Did you ship them in soil or you just put them in an envelope? <laughs> you know, I just stuck I a stamp know. on them and put them in the mailbox. 
Um, I, uh, yeah. I got as much soil off of them as I could. Soil off of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, because you want to ship them as dry as possible. Okay. So after digging them up, I rinse them off with a hose and I wash them in a bucket. And then I put them in a 10% bleach, 90% water mixture and soaked them for about 30 minutes. So this way, I was protecting everybody else's garden from anything that my garden might have had. Uh, and it didn't hurt the, the root at all? No. 10% bleach solution. I had my timer on, so I wouldn't forget. You then mean I, any bleach like Clorox, like something like that? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. I rinsed them. I laid them out on paper. And then I let them dry out. Um, I shipped them in with just some shredded newspaper. But you could also ship them with some wood shavings. Or maybe some straw. Mm-hmm. Um, but the chipping dry is the key. I You could also punch a hole in the sides of the box for ventilation. I did not do that. And I uh, just asked my brother and my sister today, how do they turn out? And they sent me pictures of their irises, all oh. green, about eight inches tall. And oh, they looked great. So nice. I bet they're going to get flowers this year. Oh, beautiful. Nice. So, um, if you have too many iris... Ship him as a gift. That's perfect. (laughs) Oh, this is just beautiful. Calendula, geranium, pansies, all in pots. Nasturtiums to keep aphids away. Flocks of petunias for the pollinators. Salvia for hummingbirds. Lavender for the bees. And it's all so beautiful. The only problem, that lousy squirrel in the tree, just eyeing the flowers, ready to create havoc. What's she saying? Flowers? Ain't she gonna plant anything I can eat? Where's the tomatoes, the bulbs, the bublets? That's it. I'm moving out. I'ma pack up my stuff and move to the neighbor's tree. But I have a trick up my sleeve. Something I read about on Facebook. I'm going to put all these peanuts out here. He'll fill up on peanuts and leave my garden alone. It's a small price to pay if I can keep that bushy-tailed rat out of my garden. There. Where'd he go? Probably went to take a nap, stupid lazy squirrel. I'm not going to worry about him anymore. Well, my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. I had some good times in this yard. <coughs> kind of sorry to leave it. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. What's this thing? Peanuts? <laughs> I love peanuts. This is a peanut paradise out here. i got to grab them. i got to hide them. Oh, looky here. All these pots. What a perfect hiding place. What a great human being she is. Oh, I love her. I do. I'll just hide them deep in the pot. Get rid of this thing. And hide it in the bottom of the pot so magpies and foxes can't get it. <laughs> Ah, there we go, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> the rest of these I'll hide in my tree. I'm not going to move. I'm staying right here in my very own tree. <laughs> what? My potted flowers? Look at this. A trail of peanuts that ends at the tree. Oh, that squirrel. I'm going to get that squirrel if it's the last thing I do. Something ruining your day in the garden? Maybe it's time for a nice cup of Calm Tom's High Tea. Made with the finest dried lemon balm, holy basil, cush beans, hash grains, ganja strain, and reggae seeds. We'll have you feeling better in no time. Have a cup of... Oh, it'll do you good. <laughs> These peanuts are delicious. What is it, a sea salt on them? Roasted with some honey, maybe some sriracha. It's that music coming in. You know what it means? It means it's mailbag time. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hey, we have a letter from Pamela from Denver. 
And uh, I love the way she opens this letter. Listen to this, Christy. Hello, E-N-C slash C and E. <laughs> she doesn't want to make anybody mad. Didn't make anybody mad. She's so equitable. Yeah. Whose name am I going to say first? She doesn't even say our whole names. That's really funny. <laughs> E-N-C, C and E. She says, now that I'm fully vaccinated, I travel to Florida to spend time with my son's family. We went to a garden store and picked some plants. I told them all about loosening the roots, digging and pre preparing the holes, etc. All of the things you two have taught me. Aww. We talked about hybrid and heirloom, knowing their zone and containers. They think I'm an expert now, which is ridiculous and adorable. I credited you, of course. Also, my man has zero interest in gardening, but he insists I wait to listen to your podcast until we're together and he can listen too. <laughs> Thank you for making it seem like I know stuff. <laughs> I love this on so many levels, Edith. First of all, I loved how she feels like an expert. And I got to say that anytime anybody okay. thinks that I'm an expert, I just can't help but giggle. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. It's, yeah. And that her man likes to listen to it, even though he's not a gardener. Yeah, that's really cool, too. I, I think it falls under the car talk rule that I have mentioned before, which is that before I ever learned to drive, I really liked car talk. And this I still don't know much about cars. Yeah, well, you know, I liked car talk, too. Even though I was a driver, I liked the company of those two guys. Yes, you don't need, I, yeah. I didn't feel like I needed to know a lot about cars yeah. to enjoy that show. Me too. And I, I loved the people that called and tried to make the noises that their car was making. You know, we can't do that because gardens are kind of quiet unless we hum a lot. Maybe we should ask people who write in for a mailbag uh -huh. to try to de describe the sound. The sound of their garden. Yes. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> and what That's is what my garden sounds that? like. <laughs> <laughs> or it's going, Ooh. See, I was thinking more real, like buzzing of bees. Nice. Like flapping of Japanese beetles. Oh, like nice. That. But of course, yours, yours is better though, honestly. Pamela, thank you for your letter. And listen, everybody, please send us your favorite gardening stories, successes, flops, etc. Your gardening questions. We love hearing from you. Write to us at Upside Down Tulips at Gmail or on our website at Upside Down Tulips dot com or check out the show notes. Christy, it's time for inspiration. Would you please do something inspiring? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe this isn't so much inspirational, but I was inspired by this quote after all of our great squirrel commercials this week. Okay. Squirrels are blamed for many crimes they're not responsible for. But in this case, honesty compels me to say, it was the squirrels done it. <laughs> I saw them. Yeah. Henry yeah. Mitchell. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Especially having had a squirrel in my house. Henry Mitchell, who died in November 1993, and he was one of America's most beloved garden writers. He was especially famous for his weekly Earthman columns in the Washington Post. That's really good. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you got some laughs and some value out of Upside Down Tulips this episode, could you do us a favor? Please go to your phone and share the show on social or with a friend who might also appreciate it. We want to give special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you would like to hear more of Denise's music, go to her website at denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. Special thanks to our talented and kind friend who plays the squirrel, Karen, Karen Slack. Slack. Join us next week for our tips and tricks on perennial vegetables like rhubarb, horseradish, asparagus, other things. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Christy, don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Yeah. Upside down.